And welcome on in, everybody, to the Auburn Undercover Podcast, Auburn Undercover YouTube channel. Nathan King here with Jason Caldwell. We're back. Uh, we were talking to y'all pregame about the potential for Auburn against Cal today to show off a bunch of offensive improvements. Well, Jason, I think today went to show you never know until you put it on the field. And uh, this was this was a big face plant of a performance for Auburn, 21-14, to 14, losing today to Cal. Jason, we talked about before the game, I mean, five interceptions, or excuse me, five turnovers, that'll get you beat against just about anybody. But I think a couple of those turnovers late in the game were not when things were decided, but they were not the definition of what went wrong. Overall, it was just a complete amalgamation of issues on uh, on offense. It, it started, I think, with the offensive line. Peyton Thorne had a lot of issues. It just was a very uninspiring day for a group that made a lot of improvements, it thought, in the offseason. Yeah, I think it was everything. I think it was offense. It was defense for a half. Put behind, it yeah. was special teams for much of the game. Yep. Um, you know, Cal played field position. They backed Auburn up. Um, they kept control in the third quarter, even though they didn't move the football much either. Mm -hmm. But Auburn couldn't get they couldn't get anything going offensively for the entire game, other than the, the first series got helped out by a couple penalties there. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of dumbfounding a little bit for me. Yes. Um, I didn't expect it. Uh, I don't know that anybody expected. It. I think we we saw a bunch of shot guys because I think they thought, okay, this is a team we're better, and they are better talented in terms of athletically they are, but you saw a veteran group of guys on both sides of the ball that totally took Auburn out of what they wanted to do. Yep. And I thought they controlled the line of scrimmage. And I thought, frankly, I thought coaching on both sides of the ball went way in favor of Cal today. And that was a big difference too. Yeah, I mean, there was you know little things that pay off here and there. Auburn decided to throw it. Well, I don't know if they decided. It may have been an RPO read uh, two times in a row on a third, third and two, down. and fourth and two. Huge um, plays of the game. Yeah. It's huge plays. Yeah. And the, both of those were in, the, were in Cal territory. Yeah, I mean, you look back at the Cal game last year and we were sort of looking at it this week and saying, all right, what, 230 yards offense, four turnovers. Surely they can't do that again. Uh, they go out there and have uh, what feels like a worse performance because you're so it, it's worse than what you got and you're in this building. Yeah, it's, it's, it's worse because you, you are. You're at home. You've got better talent than you had last year. Um, it's absolutely a worse performance than it was last year. Yep. Uh, Auburn went down the field, like Jason said, went down the field and scored right away. Uh, Thorne made a really good throw to Keandre Lambert-Smith. From that first drive to the end of the second quarter, Jason, they went 20 minutes of game time between first downs. Uh, as Peyton Thorne said after the game, every time it felt like they got any sort of rhythm, whether it was Jarquez Hunter, hey, seven yards on first down, um, they were just hit with negative plays. And I think that started to crumble. We saw issues in the first half, it was sort of muddled. For me, Jason, when it really broke down, the second half felt like, honestly, the pass rush for both teams. Auburn cranked it up to slow Mendoza, but Cal cranked it up as well, and that offensive line just, they could never really recover. Thorne was running around every single play. Yeah, no, it, was, it, it wasn't just Peyton Thorne. There's no question yeah. about it. We saw pressure. Uh, and they weren't having to blitz to get a ton of pressure. Um, but it was, it was a little bit of everything. Um, you know, offensive line issues, early on they didn't run it very well. Yep. And, and, and you know, they made a couple of throws. Cal made some adjustments and they backed off a little bit and said, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we're not gonna let you throw the ball down the field. So they, they did, they got physical with Auburn's young receivers. I thought that played a part in this game as well. Uh, but, you know, the overwhelming theme for me was just the lack of playmaking ability. Those are guys that we, we were we were expecting to see it happen. And honestly, it, it, it starts with Peyton Thorne. I know it. it's everything else. It's offensive line play. It's, yep. it's everything to do with it. But there were just so many plays. He admitted it after the game. He said, look, I made some throws that I normally wouldn't make. I didn't make them. Um, you can't have those kind of things in this offense because yep. everything's on his shoulders. You know, protections, the things you're doing, and honestly, it's my big question now is what do you do? Yeah. Um, it's not all on him, but man, it, it's it's gonna be tough to go, hey, just roll it back out there again. I, yeah. I don't know, I, honestly, I, it's a bad position to be in two games. It is, and it's, you know, maybe it's not horrible you get New Mexico next week. I mean, you get a little bit of a, of a landing pad there, but yeah, I mean, Thorne had never thrown four interceptions in a game in his career, and Auburn quarterback had not thrown four interceptions in a game since Brandon Cox. Brandon in, Cox in 2000. In two, 
2007 against Georgia. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's been quite a minute since we've seen that kind of performance from an Auburn quarterback. I mean, I think it went from, at one point, them, like you said, trying to run the RPO system and then going one-on-one. -on -one. Those throws that were there against somebody like Alabama a and and their personnel, those throws against Cam Coleman, they weren't there. Much smaller window. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was – there wasn't a whole lot to take from it. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of positives. And defense whole, adjustment I think that was deserves the, a little bit of correct. Credit. That's yeah. the big. That's the big thing. Was yeah. was them in the second half. Yeah. They did They're a great smoked. job. They're I mean, smoked. they they did a great job of, of getting pressure. Yeah. Uh, playing a little tighter coverage. We saw very little of Keontae Scott after the first half. They you know he played a little bit inside at nickel, but it was almost in, exclusively Antonio Kite and Kay and Lee outside at corner, and things got better. They did a yeah. better job back there. So I don't know. There there's a lot of soul searching that's going to be done in the next couple of days. Yeah, especially because, like you said, there needs to be a lot of soul. I mean, there's struggles across the board. I mean, even you go to special teams. I think about how often they were backed up. A couple of those were Keon he just had a bad day overall. I thought a couple of those were his decisions to let the punts roll. Um, Jason, you know, they everyone will say, "Don't let a team beat you twice." It's it's you. There's one side of the coin, another side of the coin for this being a loss so early in the season. Number one, because. It sucks. It, it kind of undercuts what you thought you had, but at the same time, it is so early. We see it across the sport. I mean, Notre Dame went out and lost to Northern Illinois today after they had the one of the biggest wins yeah. of Week One. Auburn has plenty of time to recover, correct? But they have a lot of work to do to correct. do so. No question. That's it. You know, what, what can you do? I know. I mean, I, I expect we'll see Peyton Thorne because when yeah. they go back and watch the film, probably it, it's not going to be all his fault. How much of it? We don't know. We know with the, the last one, Keandre Lambert Smith, they thought he was going to run a, di a different route, and he free said he should have run a different route. There'll be some of those things that have to get fixed, but man, it's when you start looking at it, do, do you move Dylan Wade back outside to tackle? Because there were some struggles that on, from the tackle spots for this team. Yeah. And I, they've given themselves some options, and, and there's talent, but it's a lot of young talent. Um, I honestly don't know what we'll see, but you know, New Mexico, no matter what. Um, you can go out and score 100. Yep. You're still going to have question marks when you go up against a good team and, until you go out and prove it again in, in this situation. Oh, they've got some players. I mean, New Mexico's got players, yeah, too. I mean, they went out and competed with Arizona. But like Jason said, lots of soul searching to do. Um, after this one for Auburn, lots of pieces to pick up. So for Jason Caldwell, I'm Nathan King. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on the post game podcast, whether you're listening on the podcast channels or on the YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys for joining. We'll catch you guys next week. Everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend.